Hi, welcome back. This is Neha. Hello, hi. Neha is a physical therapist mm -hmm. and a prenatal educator, childbirth yes. educator, and a doula. doula. And she's also a midwifery student, and I get to work with her. Yay, so and, lucky we are. And we are at a birth right now, and she had a great question, so I just thought we'd hop on and chat about it. Yeah. So we were talking about how, why can labor stall? Yeah. Or why can labor arrest? Yes. So let's brainstorm some reasons. Yep. Um, first, I think is just to give her some rest. Her body might need rest. Her body might need some rest. Recoup the energy. But that, yeah, so there could be a plateau. Yes. Right, which would be that she is resting, recouping energy, um, that uh, she has a break in contraction patterns. Mm -hmm. But plateaus are not usually random. They're usually caused by something. So what could cause a labor to plateau? Is that the position of the baby? Could be position of the baby. What else? Can the uterus be tired for a while? Yes, we can have actual maternal fatigue, maternal exhaustion, mm -hmm. or we can have um, uterine inefficient contraction, mm -hmm. incoordinate contractions, yes. or actual fatigue. Yes. Yeah. What else? Is it something like she's trying to hold on? Is something that will play because yeah. she is? Yeah, it could be psychological. Yes, right? it is. Like emotional arrest or emotional um, dystocia, essentially. And it can cause a lack of, um, or it can cause a pulling back from the sensation. Yeah. Where um, she needs a break or she needs space to. Yeah. 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 Go back. So um, emotional dystocia is sometimes caused because of fear, Yeah. sometimes caused because of stress, because when we have adrenaline rest circulating in our body, mm -hmm. um, adrenaline is the neutral, neutralizes oxytocin, yes. you know this, and yes. so that fight or flight response yes. can cause a pause. Um, certainly fatigue, lack of calories, dehydration, right? Uh, but the most common reason why babies are in funky positions, or the babies in funky positions are what cause an arrest. Mm -hmm. So, do we think that maybe this baby rotated into the posterior? Can we check it? We could, but let's think through what the benefit is. So we already know she doesn't love exams. Yeah, that would mean that a prolonged labor, the posterior. We have a, it could make a prolonged labor. Yes. So we have a, we have already have rupture. Yes. And we have a primeb. Yes. who doesn't really like exams, it's uncomfortable, right? Absolutely. So we want to avoid as much as possible, mm -hmm. but not avoid to the point where we then have... No clue. No clue. Yeah. Or have to transport because we missed a time to intervene to keep it normal. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, I think at this hour, we're okay. Mm -hmm. But I think as we get closer to evening, mm -hmm. we do need to have a plan to go into the evening. Okay. And um, I think we could use the natural midwives get up and go the midwife's pitocin which is basically breast pumping yes because it releases a bunch of hormones Nipple and stim. exactly it causes mm -hmm. the contractions and um we could use some herbs or homeopathy so what kind of herbs would you recommend well right i was going to ask you what do you recommend we yeah. have not been using the herbs oh you haven't no no okay well i know predominantly north american herbs mm -hmm. um so i'm not sure that that is a good choice here. Mm -hmm. Homeopathy is very common here though. Yes. It's, it's a traditional medicine here. Yeah. And I do have a big homeopathy kit. Uh -huh. So we could utilize that. That feels more like in alignment with mm -hmm. this community. Something like Pusatilla. Pusatilla could work. Um, Pusatilla is like the windflower, right? So Pusatilla yes. is um, sometimes stage fright, um, sometimes in coordinate contraction, sometimes malpositioning, it can affect all of those. Okay. So that would be a good option. Um, I also love um, gelsinium. It can be a tremendous uh, remedy for the cervix. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously califylum and semisifuga are really traditional uh, labor prep or labor encouragement homeopathy and they're the homeopathic preparations of blue and black cohosh. Mm -hmm. Hypergum has also been helpful to me before. Okay. We could use that. Um, she has been having this gas issues, yeah. and carboveg kind of speaks to me about that because okay. carboveg is that heavy, full, gassy, bloated kind of feeling. Is carboveg, so we could do that. I don't know. Acupressure points actually would work. That would be a great idea. Do you yeah. have familiarity? Yes. I have it. Yes. 
Okay. It, it has worked. Yes, many, many labels, many I agree. Labels. Acupressure can be hugely helpful. So either we can do nip, nipple stip, lem, uh, nipple stimulation right now or maybe the acupressure because both of them would For be both. a little strong. No, no, I think both. Okay. Why not? So where, what acupuncture points do you like to use? Pinky toes. Pinky toe. Mm -hmm. And Bladder 67. Then four, uh -huh. Six, this one. Uh -huh. And I, I use these, or maybe at times this uh -huh. one. Good, good, good. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. All right, let's try it, see what happens. Yes. We have a mama at six who's probably had a bit of an arrest of progress. Mm -hmm. She's, her contractions have spaced out. And yeah, prom. Yeah, but she's energetic. She's doing she well. She's energetic, yeah. She's been taking rest and activity, rest and activity. Mm -hmm. So we are 36 hours post rupture? Yes. I think we're 36 hours post rupture. Yes. And we are doing prophylactic GBS antibiotics mm -hmm. and hopeful that we can have a baby by tonight. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>